Guess what we're gonna do today, guys? We are gonna rip apart a Battleborn, and I need to use this, though, for the solar shed, so we're gonna put it back together in another case. But I need to see what's inside, because I've been recommending these for a long time, and we've been opening up other batteries, and they're either really good or really bad. And this one is in the middle of all the others price-wise, so I'm wondering what's inside. All I know is it has cylindrical cells and a super beefed up BMS, and that's about it. And everybody at Battleborn is very smart. I ask these companies various questions about their batteries, and most of them are like, oh, I don't know. Oh, we haven't tested that. Oh, lithium batteries need a low temperature disconnect? I had no idea. So I've dealt with a lot of ignorance from a lot of these battery companies. But Battleborn, everybody that works there, they answer my questions instantly. And they're like, no, we've done this. We cycled it a thousand times. It works perfectly. And they also have a really good warranty. So that's why I've been recommending them. But we need to see what's inside. It has been driving me nuts. Last night I was laying in bed and I was like, I just want to know. I just need to know what's inside that battery. We're going to put this Dremel tool on the lowest setting and go nice and slow. Guys, I can see the cells right there. I need to be so careful. This thing is insanely hard to open, you guys. So after looking inside, we need to cut around these terminals because they are strapped to the inside somehow. <laughs> and this, ladies and gentlemen, is the inside of a Battleborn battery. So first we have a positive and we have a negative. The negative is connected to the BMS and this is a battery management system. And then this is connected to the negative bus bar of the cells. And we have four parallel packs in series underneath the BMS. And this will create a 12 volt battery pack with lithium iron phosphate chemistry. And then this BMS is also controlled and balances the cells with these balanced leads. So if one of the cell packs goes too low, it will disconnect power from the loads by using the BMS disconnect. So you can think of the BMS as a large switch. And there's a small temperature sensor on top of the cells that you can see, and that controls the BMS if it's too cold or even too hot. And what's interesting is there's only one temperature sensor. I actually thought they would have multiple, but I don't see any others. And on the inside, the number on the cell tells us it's a 26650, so it's larger than the traditional 18650 that's in the older Teslas or inside of lithium battery packs for your laptop. And there's a model number on the battery, but I can't find it on Alibaba or anywhere else. I do know that it's their proprietary cell and they go to their own manufacturer and they also check them and match the cells. So that's like their own cell inside. I was really thinking I was gonna find it on Alibaba, but I can't, I just searched all over for it. And what's really cool about this battery is that the cells are a clear inch away from the BMS. This will heat up under large loads and they understand that. So they keep it away from the cells and they have a plastic barrier. There's actual copper in here. This is really good stuff. And a lot of people may notice that the cycle life for Battleborn is a bit more than other drop-in replacements. And it's because they increase the capacity of their batteries and then they change the charge and discharge cycle bandwidth so they can hit higher charge cycle life numbers. I've seen that on a couple of their interviews. Now let's talk about the build quality. After looking at it for a while, I've noticed that the BMS has a conformal coating Every connector is glued down and every balance wire. We have actual copper bus bars and we have very thick wires. We have five 10 gauge, 10 copper wires going from the bus bar to the BMS and it's about six inches and then six inches over here. So this will absolutely carry a 100 amp load. Let's compare this to the Ruxu. It has the same exact continuous current rating, but you only have four 14 gauge wires. So this can carry like three times the amount of the Ruxu. And on this side of the board, and then there's a conformal coating over the whole thing. And it even covers up the ends of the wires. So this could actually handle a lot of moisture or debris if it ever entered the case. What am I supposed to say that's bad about this? This passes all of the tests. Everything that I complained about in the Ruxu is not present in this one at all. And I like how they have cylindrical cells for lithium iron phosphate because if one of these failed and shorted, the battery would continue to work. You'd have a decreased capacity, yes, because you have these cells in series, but you could still use it. I think that these batteries will probably last a lot longer than what people think. Can't open it. 
So I found out that they glue these little cross members inside the battery. It's really hard to remove it. <laughs> yes! So they use this crazy sponge foam inside. It's really weird feeling. Here it is, a Battleborn, the cells. We made it. So these packs are spot welded to nickel plates, and then they're just touching each other, and then they're bolted on the top. See, the plates are bolted together, but they can move. You know what I want to know is <laughs> how many cells we actually have inside, because I have no clue. And I can't really count it right here, but I'm going to use the spot welds to count. 17, 18, 19, 20, 29, 30 cells in each parallel pack. And 30 times 4 is 120 cells. And the nominal voltage of these cells is 3.2 volts, and each one has 3.4 amp hours. So that means we get 10.88 watt hours for each battery cell. And so if we multiply that by 120 cells, it has 1,305.6 watt hours for this battery and they rate it at 1,280. Isn't that cool and so smart to do? And you can tell that it's the true capacity just based off of the weight alone. With the Lion Energy, we weighed it and we said, okay, at the energy density of lithium iron phosphate, it's physically impossible to reach the numbers that they were advertising. But with Battleborn, they overshoot the capacity so that they know that everybody will always have that capacity and they'll have an improved charge cycle life. Which is so cool, guys, look at this thing. And let's look at the side of the battery. So we have a nickel plate, then we have a copper bus bar that attaches to the terminal. Just considering the design, I bet this could handle a lot more amps than what it's advertised for, but it's limited by the BMS. But you could probably crank like 200 or 300 amps out of this battery pack, which I kind of want to do. Maybe we should hook up a really powerful BMS and see what happens. You know what's great is I can actually recommend it. Okay, finally, we have a good battery, jeez. I was actually scared that we would find something bad and we did it, everything looks good. I think if there's only one thing I could suggest is if there was multiple temperature sensors, it would be nice to have a second temperature sensor on the bottom of the battery because we only have a single temperature sensor. And let's say it gets really cold down here but really hot up here, it's unlikely because the case is so thick and well protected, but I think having one on the opposite end of the battery would be better. But there's a possibility that the threshold for when this disconnects charging um, is at a higher temperature than necessary just for safety headroom. So instead of, you know, cutting off at 32 or 35 degrees Fahrenheit, it will cut off at like 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So you could easily get away with one temperature sensor and you would be good to go. And it's nice to see that the temperature sensor is connected directly to the cell. Cause I'm sure we're gonna find a battery where it's just like sitting around somewhere in like a cheap Chinese battery. I cannot find these cells. Even if I get the beginning of the number, I get a different capacity cell. So this is driving me nuts. I cannot find these cells online. You almost can always find a cell if you Google it. So this is weird for me. You know what, I wanna leave it like this. This looks so cool. It's like some futuristic battery pack. You know what'd be cool is a translucent container, a battery case. Someone has to be building something like that. You know what's crazy is this is a very simple design and I don't see why people like Ruxu are not copying this. And there is no way the battery manufacturers are not buying each other's batteries and opening them up. So it's weird that when someone has a good design, I see that the valance is harder to copy because of the cell packs that are in the arrangement. And also the BMS board has a lot more functionality with connecting to other batteries. This one doesn't, this is like a standalone battery. It just has two terminals and that's it. There's no buttons, no communication method. And that's why the Avalance has a larger, more sophisticated BMS. This one's actually very simple. So yeah, I don't think there's anything else to really say. It's a pretty simple design and I'm glad I can still recommend them. I was, I was so scared that we would find something, but it looks pretty boring and basic and it works really well. So, and I haven't killed one of these yet. It's the only battery that I haven't had go into safety mode for no reason or something stupid happening. You know what's really cool about this design as well is if you have a prismatic cell and one of the cells fails, the whole battery is done. In this system, if one of these cells fails, you will have reduced capacity, but it will still work. I think these batteries will last a ridiculously long time. That's why they have such a good warranty. 
It's because it's a simple, solid design. A lot of those guys that work there have been doing this for a while and they're very smart. They answer my questions instantly and they know every part of these batteries and other batteries on the market. So yeah, that's the inside of a Battleborn and I was pleasantly surprised for the first time ever. There are other batteries coming to the market right now so I can't wait to see what people throw together because every single battery is so different in design. So I can't wait, it will be awesome. Also, if you guys need help with your solar power systems, please check out my forum. We have a free forum and there's lots of smart people on there. Everyone's sharing their projects. It's so much fun. So yeah, I'll talk to you guys soon and thank you so much for watching. All right, bye.